Hello students, in this video we'll discuss permutation matrices. Let's consider a permutation sigma, which maps the set 1, 2, up to n, into the set 1, 2, up to n. It has to be a bijection. And then define the matrix, define P sigma to be an n by n matrix such that the ij entry of this matrix is equal to 1 if sigma of j is equal to i and 0 else. Okay. That's what a permutation, this is a permutation matrix. So permutation matrix. So we'll see an example of this, just to make sure we get us understanding what's going to happen over here. So let's suppose we're given a permutation. So there's an example of one of these things. In the standard sort of way we write permutations, I can do 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I want to figure out what 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are mapped. I'm going to map 1 to 3, 2 to 1, 3 to 2, 4 to 5, and 5 to 4, right? So in other words, 1 gets mapped to 3, 2 gets mapped to 1, 3 gets mapped to 2, 4 goes to 5, 5 goes to 4. What would this look like over here? This is going to correspond to, this is my sigma, this is my sigma over here. My p sub sigma is going to be equal to 1. Well, I'm going to have this over here. I'm going to have a 0, a 0, a 1, 0, 0. Let's see why that makes sense over here, because what do we think of? If we think of uh, my i, so my j is 1 in this case. So in other words, sigma of 1, because we're in the column, has to be equal to what? Sigma of 1 is equal to 3, so the only time I get a 1 is in the third column, right? Likewise, I get a 1, a 0, a 0, a 0, and a 0. Then the 3 goes to 2, so I get a 0, a 1, a 0, a 0, and a 0. Then we'll get a what? Then we'll get a 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Then a 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, like so. So that would be a, this permutation matrix over here. Now let's make some observations about these permutation matrices. One observation we can make is that these permutation matrices are orthogonal matrices. So since these are orthogonal matrices, are orthogonal. We can easily see that because we just have a rearrangement of EI, the um, EI hat in any of the columns, and those EIs are perpendicular to each other. Our orthogonal, we have P sigma inverse is P sigma transpose. Okay, so the transpose these are they're all invertible, and their inverses are the given by their transpose. That's beautiful. Now, there's another couple propositions we're going to prove over here. So let's prove the first proposition of these things. Proposition one. Let sigma 1 and sigma 2 be permutations. Okay. Then if I multiply p sigma 1, p sigma 2, that's going to correspond to p sub sigma 1 composition sigma 2. Okay. So how do we prove this? Proof. Let's suppose that this is a matrix over here, aij. And this is a matrix over here, B, I, J. Okay, so in other words, the sigma 1 corresponds to the matrix A, the sigma 2 corresponds to the matrix B. All right, so what will P1, P sigma 1, P sigma 2 look like? The I, J entry of this will be the sum, K goes from 1 up to N, of what? Of the A, I, so A, I, K, A, I, K, and then B, K, J, right? By definition of multiplication. All right, and so now what do I know about these AIK? So I know that AIK, so AIK is equal to 1 if what? Only when sigma of K is equal to I. And I know that BKJ, BKJ is equal to 1 only when, that's of course sigma 1, sigma 2 of what? Sigma 2 of j is equal to k. Okay? So if we put these together, the only time I get a entry of 1 over here is when both these equations are satisfied simultaneously for that value of k, right? So what do I need? So now I'll look at the composition of these things. So the composition of these things, let's look at sigma 1 composed with sigma 2. Sigma 1, sigma 2, 
What do we need? We need that. What happens if I plug in J to sigma 1, sigma 2? That will be sigma 1 of what in this situation? Sigma 1 of sigma 2 of J is equal to K, and sigma 1 of K is equal to I, right? So in other words, this thing is equal to 1 if and only if we have sigma 1 and sigma 2. So in other words, what we have over here is we see that these coefficients are exactly equal to the matrix coefficients for P sigma 1 compose sigma 2 i j by this relationship over by this relationship over here and these relationships over here tell me exactly that i must have the composition of those two permutations to get exact to get what we want excellent okay so now what else do we know so now we have the other the next and most important proposition proposition is the following is that what will this do so if i do p sigma and the matrix b will do what this, so will be equal to P sigma. And what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to input the rows of B. So in other words, this is going to be B1 is going to be the first row of B, B2, second row of B, all the way down to Bn, the nth row of B. Okay? So what P sigma will do to this thing is P sigma is going to take this and write it as B sigma 1, B sigma 2, B sigma n. In other words, it just what? It just permutes the rows. It permutes the rows. Okay? And then what? And then what will, if I put the P sigma on the other side, and then B P sigma, Similarly, we'll permute the columns. And that's easy to see as well, because what can we do? If we look at the ij entry of this thing over here, so the proof is what? Is that you have the ij entry p sigma b ij is going to be what? It's going to be the sum. k goes from 1 to n. And then I'm going to use the same notation here. I'm going to say the I for this guy. So I'm going to have A, A what? A, I, K. And then B, K, J, where B are the entries of the B. And now what can I say over here about these A, I, Ks? They're equal to 1 if and only if what? If and only if sigma of K is equal to I. Okay? In other words, this K entry over here has to be what? This K entry is going to have to be every k that works will correspond to, I can replace that k with sigma inverse of i. So that k over there is really sigma inverse of i, and that corresponds to what? That corresponds to permuting the entries in the row, because I've just changed the what? I've just changed the row entries over here, so this condition over here, sigma k equals i, and since these permutations are invertible, says that the coefficient, the row coefficients of b are permuted when you perform this operation on the when you multiply on the left, and then analogously when you multiply on the right, the roles of i and k, or i and j are just changed, and you're going to permute the columns in that case. So these permutations on the left correspond to row, interchanging rows, permuting rows, and the permutation matrix on the right corresponds to permuting the columns. Thank you very much.